Hey guys, Kathleen here. Uh, we're gonna go for a drive. We don't believe in buckling. Um, we're gonna go for a drive after I do my job, my crossing guard job. Because Mr. wakes up super early and he needs a nap. I don't, I don't need a nap. So we're gonna go for a drive. Now I kinda wanted to show you where we live now. You know, pros and cons. But I want to show you this piece of property I keep dreaming about. We uh, live here! <laughs> That's Kyle's. It's an Arto jacket. Yeah, it is an Arto jacket. Why do you away? So we just left this, the, the neighborhood, but you can see we live pretty close to some farmland. They raise alfalfa and field corn, the pumpkin farm got sold and is now homes, and the last orchard that was close by is now homes. But you know what? People need a place to live, right? Just not in my backyard. The area I live in now is great for raising kids. Kids everywhere, lots of kids, but because there's lots of kids, we need lots of housing very crowded, very fast. My county has half a million people already and projected in 17 years, we will have 1 million people in, in my county. Where's all the water gonna come from? We live in a desert. Makes me just a little bit worried where all that water's going to come from. I love my mountains. I love that there's shopping really close. Any store that I could possibly want, we have. I can find three Costco's within 20 minutes. Pretty neat, but at a cost. Cars, construction, traffic, people, everywhere. So we are also kind of landlocked where I am. We have a, a lake and mountains and mountains and more mountains, so a little bit landlocked. If I can just get on the other side of the mountain range, that big mountain you saw with the snow already, yes, snow already, the price of land goes down incredibly, incredibly. But then there's no jobs. This little town in the middle of a hidden valley has no stores, no stoplights, no gas stations and one old shut down primary school. Shut down, abandoned, out of business. All the kids are bused 20 to 30 minutes away to the next town. And when I say all the kids, the town only has 500 people. Affordability, the internet makes this piece look amazing. Five acres for $95,000? Yes, and you're at the end of a cul-de-sac. With that being your view, you still have neighbors. Yeah, well, did you see the cliff? Yeah, that property is straight up a mountain. I hardly saw flat land to build on. This cute little town has no businesses. It's five acres, five acres of not so much hilly land. There's buildable sites, there's farmable sites. Now, in this in this valley, you are given water rights, which is pretty important when we only get 12 inches of rain here. Snow already, even though I looked up the growing zones, it's the same where I am now. I think it's just they're 1,000 feet more elevated than I am. Deer for sure would be an issue. Eating the garden, eating the orchard, and the garden. Well, let's say rabbits, livestock, uh, coyotes, yeah, coyotes. This is the last available lot so far. I've been watching this town for about eight years and it's just now being opened up, broken up for development. Five acres, you can have a well, you get water rights, you're on septic, so off-grid possibilities, solar, sun we get sun a lot since we don't get any rain last last lot 
that one sold, but there's one more lot available for $300,000. This town is just so quaint with agriculture, growing food and hay, cows, horses. There, I could make a complete catalog of beautiful historic barns, picturesque views of the mountains. And history feels rich with history. That peak up there, we call that the Everest of Utah because people seek to climb it every year. Where are we?